What's up, everybody? What do you know? I'm early. Well, like 30 seconds early, but um, that's because Dimitri is keeping me on time. Uh, I want everybody to welcome Dimitri. He's been on the channel a couple times now. He is a hotshot New York attorney who, who knows, maybe one day he'll be on Diddy's team since he has like a thousand attorneys right now. What's up, Dimitri? I'm doing all right. Thank you for having me on. I'm, I'm excited to be here and talk to you about this stuff. Dimitri does have a channel. I have pinned it um, in the description of this video. Uh, last time you were here, we did an intro, but we're not really doing the intros anymore because of the subject matter. So I know you were looking forward to that. <laughs> he wasn't. Anyway, let's start here. Um, the reason I think Dimitri is a good person to have on is because I give commentary, but it's different when you have a legal, legal, legal mind. I want to start with this and see if you can give us any insight. It says that um, Diddy's, Diddy's judge has been reassigned. As far as we know, it was just because the initial judge could not um, find time for the trial, but a lot of people are thinking that this new judge might be Diddy's way of getting bail. Do you know anything about Judge Judge Anand Superman or whatever his name is? No, it's you know the assignings of these cases should be random. That's really what they are. They're administrative assignments. Um, and really, what happens in these kinds of cases is at the initial stage, you may see one judge, and then it may get shifted to a district judge. Um, him making a bail application down the line is not uncommon. Uh, that happens in, in many cases, uh, particularly cases where obviously defendants are in. So uh, the potential renewal of a bail application doesn't surprise me. As for the assignment of the judge, that's random, that's administrative, and nobody here has any real reason to think otherwise, you know? Okay. I mean, that's good to know. The conspiracy theories are numerous. <laughs> Basically right, innumerable at this point. Um, do you feel as though Diddy should have gotten a bail? That's in question. Some people feel like the judge was with it was well within reason, given that he's a potential flight risk. But we do know that he went ahead and paid eighteen million dollars to completely pay off his fifty million dollar mansion in Miami, and he put that up as like his collateral. Do you feel like? he should have been given bail or is he sitting in jail like he should be? Well, look, let's be honest. It's a real serious case, a real serious case, right? And there are certain considerations that judges take into account when making these determinations. The primary one is a determination as to whether or not the defendant will come back to court, right? You don't really have that issue here because he's a well-known figure. He's obviously incredibly famous. And so nobody thinks that he'll skip out, at least not, in the traditional way that a defendant may in a regular case. Uh, beyond that, look. The Russell charge... Simmons ran to Bali. I mean, there are people who run to places where you can't be extradited. That's right. It happens, but it doesn't happen often, right? Okay. It doesn't happen often. Um, and this is a really high-profile case where he would have to surrender his passport upon arrest, right? So the likelihood of him doing something like that would take a whole lot of collaboration from folks and 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 in an illegal way. So I don't know that that was a risk, but the charges are real serious, right? And the charges involve interstate travel, right? Conduct among different places and witness tampering, right? Paying off of witnesses, uh, influencing witnesses, putting witnesses under duress, uh, coercing witnesses, scaring them, right? And so all of those consideration a judge will take into account, right? The overall danger that this defendant may pose to society. And here you have several of those factors weighing against it. Um, I just want to point out that after Biggie passed away, Diddy and multiple people were put in trunks and moved across the state. That That is <laughs> fact. This man can get around... Um, the law that I think they said that they were um, potentially running from gang violence. His the the president of Bad Boy said that they literally got in trunks and went to Nevada and stuff like that. So you just never know what people can do. I suppose that's true. <laughs> OK, so 
there are a lot of at least people my who are my subscribers who feel that Diddy still might have a chance of getting off. What do you think? Look, it's real early in the case. And so it's going to be hard to give a real prognosis about that. But we are operating within a system that has statistics. And statistics are nice because they help paint a picture and they help provide context. So here are the statistics. In federal court, the likelihood of an acquittal at trial is virtually non-existent. I mean, if you go to trial in federal court in this country, you're virtually always going to get convicted. Now, on top of that, this case is being prosecuted in the Southern District of New York, which is considered by many the top flight prosecutor's office in the country, right? It was the one that Preet Bharara was uh, in charge of for a while. It's the one that's highlighted in Billions, the TV show, right? And it's where all the high profile cases are. Have you, gone, the, have you gone up against them? In the Southern District of New York? Sure. It's a tough place to be, right? Okay. And and so those are the folks that try all of the hardcore criminals, international terrorists, you know, everybody who you can imagine, right? And so it's unlikely that he'll get off, quote unquote. Now, getting off is, 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 a, is a weird kind of vague phrase and nobody knows what it means. So and I don't potentially the wrong phrase to use when discussing Diddy. So my <laughs> well, I didn't think of that, but okay. I, I, I'm, you know, it, it's will he take a plea at some point? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Most of these cases end in a plea. I don't know if this one will because it's so serious, and I don't know if they'll give him any real preferable offers for a plea. So he may have to go to trial on this one. And statistically speaking, going to trial is just not a good idea in this place. But that doesn't mean he'll not do it because he may not have a choice. Um, from a layperson's perspective, when I initially saw the complaints, like the lawsuits, I really thought that Diddy was going to be scot free. And, and even when they announced that the, he was under federal investigation, I thought, OK, well, lots of people are under investigation. He'll probably just flip, give over a bigger name and he'll be back on star island doing exactly what he's always done now with all of these lawsuits potentially another 120 that will be filed shortly and people coming forward every day i don't see how i mean would he eventually be able to maybe move some things around and file bankruptcy if he's losing these suits so we have to separate a civil case and a criminal case. Mm -hmm. okay? You can settle a civil case. You can't pay your way out of a criminal case. That's not how it works. Those are different things. So the victims involved in the criminal case may also be plaintiffs in civil cases, right? And settling a civil case doesn't mean that those victims can't then come into court and testify in the criminal case. Like Cassie. Right, right. So settlements aren't necessarily related to criminal to, to, to the testimony of a witness in a criminal case or a victim in a criminal case. So we have to keep those things separate, right? Um, in terms of the volume of witnesses, for sure. Look, this is a case where there's, there are going to be a lot of witnesses, right? And then that's that's one of the the, the, the problems here, right? That they're going to have to tell a story, and the prosecutors will use all these folks to craft uh, a narrative that creates a, a kind of a scheme or a plan, right, that Diddy engaged in across many, many years. And they're going to use all these witnesses to do that. And that's not good for them. Okay. Um, there are a couple of attorneys who are kind of under scrutiny, but I just want to show you guys this really quickly. This is Dimitri's um, YouTube channel. Uh, Dimitri represents clients in criminal cases and matters in civil litigation. He's the founder of the law firm Dimitri Shaknovich. That's as good as you're going to get. Based in downtown Manhattan and was adjunct to assistant president at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Just to give you a brief background. So this is in his wheelhouse, guys. Um, Busby. Busby did an interview with TMZ. Um... And I kind of want to see what your opinion is as an attorney. I 
I can't hear him. Oh, you can't hear it? Hold on. Let's try this again. I don't expect there to be anything. You know, everyone's Can focused on what's what yeah. other celebrities were involved. Um, you know, who's going to be named, who's going to be outed. I don't expect that to happen this week. Uh, I'm hoping to file some lawsuits this week. Uh, we'll, they, of course, will include uh, Mr. Combs and some corporate entities. Uh, but we want to make sure that, that you know, if we name individuals uh, beyond Mr. Combs, that that we make sure that we've done our homework because it's going to create a firestorm. We understand that. So uh, we're going to make sure that we dot our I's and cross our T's. Uh, Tony, you said something interesting there. You said, I don't expect that to happen this week. So that sounds like there could be other people named, uh, other famous people named down the road. I know you said this is going to be a process over the next 30 days of filing these lawsuits. So are you saying not this week, but maybe in the weeks coming after this one? I would expect so. I, I really don't want to get in, in into a situation where people are, you know, if I don't file a lawsuit next week, then, you know, there's a, a that creates a media frenzy. But the truth is, I, I want to be clear about something. Um, if you were attending one of these parties, if you will, and you attended attended before or you knew what was going to happen, that is, um, you knew that a particular drug was being used in drinks that was causing people uh, to be coerced and taken advantage of, and you were there in the room or you participated or you watched it happen and didn't say anything or you helped cover it up, uh, in my view, you have a problem. And uh, as we file each one of these cases, we're going to make an effort to resolve them on the front end. But failing that, uh, we're going to file public lawsuits and pursue these cases aggressively. So uh, who will be named, when they will be named, all that will come out in due course. But the bottom line is, you know, I, I want to be clear about the scope of this. A lot of people attended these parties. A lot of people saw this activity going on. A lot of people uh, allowed it to go on, said nothing, didn't intervene, maybe benefited from it, profited from it. Uh, all of these individuals and entities, in my view, have exposure here. Are we talking about celebrities on the level of Diddy? I would expect so, yes. Have you sent any demand letters out to anybody other than Diddy saying, um, here's what you've done, we want to settle with you, or we're going to file? Okay, now, Dimitri, this is... <laughs> this is... <laughs> I know things in the background. For Harvey to ask this question was very telling. Harvey is very well connected. I know this <laughs> to be true. For him to ask this question, it was pointed. And I don't think it was because Busby actually gave him that and said, let's discuss this. So I, I thought that was funny. <laughs> A lawsuit. Have you sent any to, say, other celebrities beyond Diddy? We have. And I want to I explain that process because it's important. You know, in every single case, especially cases like this, uh, we collect our data, collect our evidence, do our due diligence, spend time with the victim. And then uh, because it's in the best interest of the victim, uh, we attempt to resolve these matters without the filing of a public lawsuit. And we have done that already. Uh, we've done that, I would say, you know, with a handful of individuals, uh, many of which you've heard of before, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, that's just a standard process that every lawyer in the United States who handles these types of cases uses because it's, it's, it's the right way to do it. But there are also people who want to jump on the gravy train and want to make money. And that's got to be a big slice of what you're getting. I mean, it's not just automatically believing somebody because they now i i thought it was important to discuss this with dimitri because i said there are a lot of opinions but it's great to have a legal mind here he says that that is customary we are aware that even in cassie's situation she did send um a demand letter and diddy kind of like laughed scoffed and and proceeded on with his life until it hit and then one day later he settled i think what people are feeling um, is if these people are settling and they victimized somebody, does that mean that they will not be a part of the federal investigation? Are they? No. Explain, please. So a criminal, if you're a defendant in a criminal case or a potential defendant or a co-conspirator or whatever word or phrase you want to use uh, to mean that, you can't buy your way out of that. You cannot, just, just so everybody knows, you can't buy your way out of a criminal case. It doesn't work. It's called extortion. It's illegal, okay? It doesn't work. You can't settle a civil case, a lawsuit, a demand letter, response, whatever, and expect not to be involved in the criminal case as a result. That's not how it works in this country.
So only because somebody did that on the civil side doesn't mean anything really for the criminal case. Okay. That's good to hear, but I, for some reason, the sentiment is if they have now done this, maybe the victim won't go to the feds. How would the victim know? So that's a different story, right? Now you're asking, well, not what the law says, but what will happen in real life. And, mm -hmm. and what you're asking is, look, is it possible that while the law may have these folks testify in these criminal cases, if you pay them money, they may just go away and not want to do that. And right. that sounds wrong, right? That sounds like something that we don't want to promote in this country. And is it possible that somebody will get a bunch of money and just go away and never be heard from again? Sure. Uh, you know, if they're real, really needed in a federal criminal case, I assure you they're going to be found, right? If they resist coming in to testify, there are ways to handle that too, right? There are subpoenas and material witness orders and a bunch of things that you can do to have them come in effectively even against their will, right? In a case like this, all federal agents will be deployed, the FBI and others, to find people that they need to, 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 to interview and potentially have cooperate in this case. So you're asking a practical question, and I suppose practically it's possible that somebody will just get a bag of money and, and skip out, and that'll be that. Um, but if they're really needed, they'll be found. So Busby had, I think within like the first day or two after he did the hotline, he had like 3,600 people who have called in. 300 that he decided to take his clients and 120 that he said they're definitely my clients. I don't, I'm not even, I'm, I'm done with the vetting process here. If whatever the evidence has only been supplied to attorney Busby and now through a demand letter to the, you know, whomever this celebrity is who has settled, how would the feds know? I, and that's what I think people are, I think that's what people are saying sounds suspect. Well, Ramona says these settlements sound sus suspect, maybe even obstruction. How can the lawyer promise to keep your name out of it, out of it if you settle and not tell? Well, I think the last part is what's in question. The lawyer is probably not promising to keep the name out of it. But in real life, if this person only went to Busby and never went to the feds, the feds don't know that this potential crime existed. Well, look, here's the way I would do it if this was my case. Mm -hmm. I would... I would potentially settle the civil case and I would make no representation to the potential defendant that my client won't cooperate with police, right? Because that's not true and that's illegal. And I would tell my client, look, you settled the civil case. That doesn't mean you can't take part in the criminal case. Any insinuation that the two are connected may create problems, right? So you always want to keep them apart. You always want to keep apart the idea that a settlement in a civil case can somehow impact a criminal case, right? Um, I've had cases where these issues have come up, very many of them, and every time that's what I do. Okay. You know? I hope that it, yeah. I hope that if these people were victimized, <laughs> that it will play out similar to Cassie, where the victim gets their money, but they're still criminally investigated. I don't really feel like anybody should be able to buy their way out of crimes like, I hope that there's never another Epstein type situation where you've been convicted of a crime, but you're still able to go home every day and continue to. That was crazy. Well, okay. think about think about what would happen to this country if that were the case. Right. I mean, you would have folks who have money committing crimes and buying freedom. Right. And that's a big no, no. We don't like that. OK. Um, there is another attorney who has been um, on a lot of different shows and. Let me show you her photo. Um, she initially had Audra English as a client. She now has um, a client that we don't know anything about because the complaint hasn't been filed. But she's done multiple interviews. And what went viral was her interview last week where she stated that she saw a tape that included a uh, celebrity larger than Diddy. And that celebrity um, is, I think she said, is aware of the tape. Like her and her business partner are potentially going to do catch and kill with the tape. Nobody really knew about said tape up until she told the public. So some, I'm hearing a lot of sentiment about people who do not trust her. So I'm going to play a part of this clip. 
and kind of get your opinion on catch and kill and you know if that's normal business practice for attorneys and um a lot of detail about it but i think you can reveal a little more tonight about exactly what your client says diddy did to her tell, tell us a little more if you can even though the suit's not officially been filed yes i'll have the suit filed uh sometime this week probably in the next couple of days um, it's just in editing right now just to get the final touches on it, just to make sure we haven't missed any causes of action. I think as it stands right now, we're at 19 causes of actions from sexual assault, sexual battery, of course, RICO uh, charges and uh, sex trafficking. But essentially, my client was this whole situation. It The details are graphic in nature, and the complaint lays out all of the details in the graphic, just deplorable way my client was victimized in that day, or in that night rather, and her heroing escape and how she was able to finally get away and manage to get to safety after the gruesome attack. Yeah, and I know that the details are graphic and I, I wanna be careful, um, but can you talk a little bit about the baby oil? Because- I don't wanna talk about then, the baby oil. Um, that's when, after she was, what was causing it, because it wasn't as if she was um, forced any drug. She said she had a cup of water that she took a sip of, and uh, she knew immediately it wasn't just water, but she only took a sip. And she felt that whatever the liquid was being squirted on her had something in it which uh, essentially debilitated her and her faculties. Mm. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. I mean, because in, in the complaint, the Fed's complaint, they talk about all of those bottles of body oil. So we... We knew there was a lot of lubricant, but is there, do you have any idea what may have been in it? Is there something that could have been in it that would have made it so she couldn't move? So I've done some internal research after I had my intake with my client, and it seems that oil in general is used as a conduit for specific drugs, like for instance, GHB. So in order to get that to uh, topically take- Okay, here we go, sorry. We're gonna do this one. Somebody's body, you need a conduit with in the sale of one of the Diddy tapes. So, um, which I declined that. Can you hear because, it? Uh, Wait a minute. Say that again. Say that again. Back up. Uh, you're saying that there's tapes and they're being shopped? Yes, there have been people already shopping. We've heard about the tapes. But yes. the, the the shopping thing is. Yes, new. there already have been tapes uh, leaking around Hollywood, being shopped around to individuals in Hollywood. But one particular person contacted me to shop a particular video they were in possession of and to contact the person who was in the video to see if they were interested in purchasing the video before it became a public knowledge. Uh, I've heard this before, so like a catch and kill. Catch and kill, correct. Wow, can you, and I guess you can't reveal the person who is on No, the I can't tape. explain who the person was, but Mr. High profile? Combs, Mr. Combs was in the tape and this other person is, I would venture to say more high profile than Mr. Combs. Really, really, and you've seen it? You... I've seen steals of the video. Okay. Um, I so you can verify that... I, I, that it exists, that it's real, that the other person in the video is very visible. It's no question if it's that person in the video. And I can tell the video was pornographic in nature. Oh my. All right. So we know that he videotaped a lot of activities at his home. Okay. So she went on to say that her and her business partner, she, one of the girls in the tape, she can't identify if the girl was 17 to 21. Um, and the second reason that she has not done the catch and kill as of yet is because she wants to, I guess, ensure that everything, that those are the only copies. So I'm not an attorney. When I hear catch and kill in a situation like this, I question, like, do you have an obligation to go to the cops with this? Like, or why would you? go and talk about this on national news when you are going through some type of back and forth with the person to potentially catch and kill the story. I don't know. Is that something that lawyers typically do? There's a lot of questions around this. So it's, it's, it's a bit strange. I haven't heard of this before just now. And, and you kind of skipped around the video. So it's tough for me to tell exactly what's going on. Um, Here's the truth. When you have a case that is this high profile, okay, there are ethics rules, right, that restrict lawyers from going to the media and other things. 
uh, of that nature, right? Because what we don't want in this country is we don't want people to go to the media, right? Lawyers to go to the media and impact how a court may view a case, how a jury may view a case from the media attention that you're kind of stirring up, right? This is a case that's really not like that because it's already so high profile, right? Everybody in the world knows about this case. It's incredibly, uh, obviously, famous around the country and elsewhere. So judging just from what I heard from what you showed me, it doesn't seem like she said anything wrong in terms of that because communicating with the media in a case like this is normal um, mm -hmm. because it's such a high profile case. And there are even rules that say that lawyers um, are permitted to comment on cases that are high profile to protect the interests of their clients to the extent that those interests may be impacted and so on and so forth. Um, as it relates to duties that a lawyer owes, uh, lawyers really only owe duties to clients. Obviously, lawyers can commit crimes and do other things. That goes without saying. And we have no reason to think that, 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 that she's doing any of that. But lawyers really only owe duties to clients, right? So if she's representing a client, everything that she can do within the confines of the law and ethics, she is obligated to do, right? She is obligated to zealously fight for her client. And those are the efforts that she's seeming to put forth here. Okay. So some people, someone asked, why did I have to pause the video? Because Dimitri is very busy. He was just in court and he only has 30 minutes. So we can't go through everything, but there were a lot of questions that my subscribers had that I thought, you know, who better than Dimitri to kind of tackle. Um, just as an attorney who is in New York and witnessing all of this, what do you think about the Diddy case? Just open-ended question. I think that I knew when the search warrant was executed all that time ago, when he was raided, I knew that he would be indicted. I mean, it, it, it's just, that's just what happens in these cases. Um, and I know that while the case is still early, the feds, the FBI, all the other agencies that did work in this case, and the attorneys that work for the Southern District are really good at their jobs. And I know that when those places and those people invest all the money that they have in this case, and I'm sure there's a lot of it, um, they probably put together a good case. They have the resources, they have the brains, and they have the wherewithal, right, to put together a good case. What that means is they've probably done a good job of gathering witnesses, gathering evidence, vetting these witnesses, Right. And that's not to say that he'll be convicted. I don't know. Nobody knows. Um, but it's not looking good for him. And that's sad to say because he is entitled to the presumption of innocence. He is innocent right now. He'll be innocent up until there is and if there is a guilty verdict. He's innocent um, to the court, but to the court of public opinion, YouTube. <laughs> well, I, I'm. I think that right now he's more concerned with the court that's keeping him in prison than, right. this, than this court of public opinion. Um, but you're right, publicly, right, and as, as I'm not a PR guy, as it relates to public relations, he's probably in a whole lot of trouble, but that's secondary right now, I assure you, um, mm -hmm. to defending this case. Because if and when this case goes to trial, uh, he's going to have to face a whole lot of questions and he's going to have to figure out how to navigate those very, very messy waters. Okay. Um, well, I'm not going to keep Dimitri. Uh, we're going to, we're going to end this on time guys. Again, I have, Oh, we have a couple, we might have a question. Um, Goddess Noel says, isn't attorney Busby obligated to notify authorities of criminal activities that is revealed in the course of his discovery for the civil case? So it's funny. Uh, no, right. Here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. The confidentiality rules between a lawyer and a client are really strong. Right. We in this country have a real interest in clients confiding in their lawyers. And so we've cracked, uh, crafted rules in place and put rules in place that allow lawyers almost always to prevent exposure of confidential information and privileged communications. OK, what that really means is that if a lawyer knows that somebody has committed a crime in the past, the lawyer can't really disclose that. Generally speaking, if the lawyer thinks or knows that a, a crime will take place, 
then the lawyer may doesn't have to but may report it to authorities and when i say may i mean he can do it without being ethically held responsible right without his law license being in jeopardy now obviously there have been lawyers throughout the history of this country who commit crimes right that cooperate in crimes that cover up crimes that mislead authorities that lie to federal agents that uh bring out perjurious testimony in court that is obviously not allowed and lawyers can go to jail for that and have gone to jail for that in the past right so when you're a lawyer you're really you're you're, you're kind of walking that fine line when faced with something like this right basically speaking if you're a lawyer you don't have to disclose obviously if you participate in a crime or do something more than that then you may be in trouble well beyond your law license Okay, one more. Um, sure. Why are all these people throwing away their money? The accusers will still come after them just like they did Bill Cosby. Let's... Yeah, that's a great question. That's a great question, and that's absolutely correct, right? You can't, legally speaking, ensure that paying somebody off will not make them go to the authorities. And in fact, you're not allowed, right, to even bring that up, right? Because then it may it may look like, you know, that's what happened with uh, I think uh, was it Stormy Daniels lawyer who tried to settle a case with Nike and then kind of threw in there that if you don't pay us, we're going to go to the press with something. Right. You can't really settle a case for money and imply that you're doing it for any other reason than benefiting your client. Right. If you're doing it for other reasons, then you're in trouble. OK, um, Dimitri, before we let you go, sure. what do you like? Give us a synopsis of your channel because I have it. I have it. Um, I have it pinned. But tell the people where they can find you and, and what your channel is about. Sure. So I'm a lawyer here in New York, as as you, as you mentioned. I'm a criminal defense lawyer, and I do a whole lot of civil litigation in New York and New Jersey, and sometimes elsewhere. Uh, and that's what I do mainly, right? I practice law for a living. I've been doing it for many years, uh, and I hope to be doing it for a long, long time. Uh, and beyond that, I've done other things, right? Because running your own law practice gives you the ability to do that sometimes. And so I've taught, right? And I started this YouTube channel where I interview folks about the law. I give opinions about the law. And that's at YouTube, obviously, hashtag at DShack Law, right? And if folks want to go and check me out there, then they can. And of course, if anybody has any questions, you can find my contact information anywhere online, my email, my phone number, uh, and feel free to give me a call and reach out and I'll be happy to help in any way that I can. Um, would you be happy to help Diddy? Somebody said, would you take Sean's case? <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know because I don't know enough about it because it's not my case. And I have to focus on the people that pay me money to work on their cases, not about potential hypothetical cases. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dimitri. You guys like the video on the way out and definitely stop by Dimitri's channel. He gave y'all a open invitation to ask him questions. So uh, have a good day. And for members, I'll be seeing you guys later tonight. Have a good one. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.